Welcome to another episode of This Catholic Life, conversations about life's ups and downs, big and small, how we do with every situation imaginable, whatever life throws at us, but still manage to be sensible, practical, and joyful. Today's show is another in our series on building Catholic communities. This one is about marriage and assistance for marriage and helping people be married. This is a conversation about all the ways in which marriage affects a local community, but also in which the local Catholic community can contribute to people's marriages. And today I'm joined by Paul and Carol Quist, all the way from Canada. Welcome, Paul and Carol. Mm, hi, Peter. Uh, hi, Peter. Good to see you. And you. And it's been some time since I've uh, caught up with Paul and Carol. We studied in the same institution in Australia. I'm not even sure we shared a classroom because we kind of crossed over. I was in Sydney and you're in Melbourne at the time. But we, right. uh, we shared many good times uh, chatting about the content and um, had some good times when you stayed over and we stayed over with you. Um, mm -hmm. And... You, when you finished your studies here in Australia, you went back and worked in the Diocese of Edmonton in marriage and family, and then into a parish in marriage and family ministries, mm -hmm. and you've been involved in lots of um, cool stuff. Uh, and we'll talk about what you're up to right now later in the show, but okay. um, I'm specifically mentioning those because we have a history of talking about this subject and about what can be done for marriages. You guys, actually, perhaps we could even take a step back and say, isn't the marriage and family thing part of how you became Catholic? Oh, for sure. Yeah. It was it was really John Paul, St. John Paul II's theology of the body that drew us into the church. I was a Lutheran pastor for many years. We were in midlife and uh, had no intention really of becoming Catholic until we went to a conference by Christopher West and where he lays out you know, in a very beautiful fashion, uh, the theology of the body. And that was so compelling, so beautiful, that when it was over, it was just two days, we knew we had to become Catholic. And that was in 2003. Mm -hmm. And by uh, that Christmas, we were praying the rosary in the end of March. Even though we were still Lutheran. Yeah, the end of March, <laughs> yeah. uh, I resigned from the parish where I was pastor. Uh, we sold our house in June, and then we moved in July of 2004 to study at the John Paul II Institute in Melbourne. Yeah, and, and you know, a lot of people, I think, seem to get turned off by some of the teachings of the church on marriage and sexuality, and but we actually found that it drew us in. Mm -hmm, it right. was um, It was just so beautiful and unified when we actually heard uh, the teachings, and they weren't all like new with St. John Paul. They were they were teachings, but he just greatly expanded on them. Right. And um, and when we heard that, we just knew that it was true. We knew that the teachings on contraception were true. Um, how that harms love and harms marriage. I mean, and that flabbergasted us. We certainly weren't living that way. And but when we understood the reasoning behind it. And we saw the unity in the church's teaching and the beauty behind it. It was like we just knew we had to become Catholic. That's right. Right. That's pretty. It's pretty amazing. It's. I've heard many similar stories. Um, my own journey is from the Lutheranism to the Catholicism, but it wasn't by this particular route. But my wife shares your story in that respect. She was very mm. much attracted by Humana Vitae. But yeah. can I? I've often found that people don't like what they think the church says about marriage yeah. and sexuality, and they yeah. very rarely understand the actual beauty of the whole picture because mm -hmm. our discussions these days about these matters seem to be so short. Like you, you say mm. three words and people put you in a box. Oh, you're a hater in this way or you're, you're one of these mm -hmm. weirdos. Exactly, yeah. And there's not actually a, an attempt to understand. But when you became Catholic then and you, well, you came to Australia first and, and studied uh, going mm. back into, was it into the same town? You're in the same town doing Catholic yeah. ministry this time. How did That's how right. different was that? Taking the Catholic worldview into a, into a kind of a uh, the same area, if you like, in marriage well, and family. Well, it 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 was it was we got a whole group of new friends in a way, <laughs> you know, because you know we, we, we didn't lose all of our friends, <laughs> just a few. <laughs> but but but. You know, we we came back. It, it was it was challenging though because you know we before we when we were Lutheran we owned a house and we we came back and essentially we were dirt poor, and <laughs> and so we uh, and we before too we had kind of been 
you know, like the, the Lutheran church is a lot small. It's quite small I- here in Alberta. Mm-hmm. And so we were kind of big fish in a small pond. And then we yes. were completely the reverse. <laughs> yes. Little and fish so, in a big and ocean. And so, you know, and, and so we did. And we still are actually, we have really dear friends who are Lutheran pastors still. We still get together with them once in a while. And, uh, but, but yeah, we were working in a new area. Paul was at the archdiocese at that time. And so, you know, we slowly got to know people until, I mean, well, actually, it wasn't even all that slow. We, I mean, we we started really getting to know a lot of fantastic couples and families and individuals yep. and priests. And yeah, it wasn't that hard to come back just because, well, I don't know. New work, new mission. Yeah. Was there anything different about the content, though, is what I'm trying to get at in, in the sense that as Lutherans, you had done ministry there in those areas and you you wanted to make people's lives better with mm-hmm. God through God's, you know, God's providence, et cetera. But was there anything different about taking the Catholic sort of view of marriage and sexuality into the same area? Like, did you notice that there was a, a I'm fishing to see if it was better or worse? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we had even brought theology of the body into the Lutheran church we before did. we left because we, right. we still had about a half a year. So we, we were bringing it in and we were finding then that there were Lutherans who were actually quite interested in it because That's truth so right. is truth. Right. Yeah. And beauty is beauty and love is love. But it's true. But you need them all together. <laughs> you can't just split those up. Um, so, yeah. So it was, you know, I I don't know that it was harder. I think I think because it was a much more intensified for us, it was intensified really focusing on marriage and family instead of kind of the whole realm of ministry. Paul right. wasn't preaching anymore. You know, I was yeah, doing the whole yeah, you know, all the yep. pastoral ministries. So I kind of enjoyed the narrower focus, and and also too, it improved our family life in a way because I wasn't as busy. Well, because you, you were, you <laughs> yeah. used to be a pastor, right? I did, and, I did, and and so you know how you know you're always on call, you're always pulled away. There's lots of meetings, and and yeah. when yep. whenever at your church you feel like you should be with your family, and whatever, whenever you're with your family, you feel like you should be at church visiting you're, people. You're torn. I always tell so people would, that. That that my my objection to um to married clergy has got nothing to do with theology. It's got to do with the having mercy on the people involved. Yeah. That's right. Um, you feel like yeah. you're married to two things, and yes, and, exactly. And sure, my child is very important, and I should play with them. But someone's dying down there, and I, I exactly. have to be with them. And that, mm-hmm. that does only that only happens once. So, I think having mercy on on a family, uh, it wasn't mm-hmm. fair what happened to Susie and the kids. And um, I yeah. w- I don't know if I'd want to go back to that ever. Um, yeah, I yeah. really miss the ministry, I have to say, and I think yeah. you would agree with me, Paul. I miss preaching. Yeah. I miss mm-hmm. caring for people, and I thought, and as we both believe, we were doing some good, sacramental mm-hmm. good with what we were doing, yeah. and that hurts mm-hmm. to not have that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, marriage is a vocation, and I think that's something that really changed for me when I became a Catholic, seeing marriage as a as a sacramental vocation, mm-hmm. and it's itself is a ministry. It's a it's yes. a ministry of grace, which, which happens. It is. Perhaps we can talk about that a bit and say, how can I mean you, you're now in lay ministry really, and yep. th- how can we as lay people through our own marriages and through um, ministering to other people's marriages build the community? Well, of course the the Catholic family and marriage are you know the domestic church, and and as we as we form good families and happy marriages, that's only going to strengthen our parishes. And, and the world and the world and and you know as we raise um godly children you know well-formed children uh <laughs> sane children that that, yeah. that provides a pool of of good people for you know those who will be called to um you know clerical vocations and so forth sure. so uh, and marriage and and too, marriage yeah. as well yeah. too well, that, that's great for people who've got in good situations, but w- mm. the church has traditionally and, and historically been there for people in really rough situations, like the, the real poor, mm. like the yes. dirt poor and the people with broken families and the, and the orphans and the widows, you know, through Scripture, always God's focus. Uh, mm. And some of the, the problems you hinted at there uh, are in situations where people are in single single parent homes and and yes. broken yes. homes and and hurting homes and abuse situations what does the church have to offer in those circumstances 
Well, I think I think quite a few things. I mean, especially the sacraments, and and I think part of the problems in some of the places now where where COVID is a big issue, and we're not even getting as many sacraments. That's really tough because we really need. I think the sacrament of reconciliation is vital. I mean, it's just c- crucial for a marriage. I think, um, and for for any of us because we receive both healing and strength and this new slate and and the Holy Spirit's power. Uh, you know. We receive so much through the sacraments. So, so that's one thing for sure that the church gives. But, and I mean, we were running all kinds of programs, which then fizzled again because, because of the of COVID, COVID stuff. Yeah. So, and we were both actually laid off, but, um, because they just couldn't, well, we had a very large staff at the church we were at. So I think we were, we were overstaffed, but, but all of us who were involved in any kind of ministry, uh, were laid off. So, but there can be. A lot of really good, strong ministries. I know we ran um, a, div- a group for divorced women, and that was that was actually really good because we, even though I, you know, I haven't been through a divorce, I certainly I was a support person, and and each of the the people there ministered to each other, and it was a very important. You know, you can have all kinds of niches that you can um, kind of help individually. And then we did some coaching and um, that kind of thing. And we had a men's programs yeah. and uh, all sorts of things for Yeah, sometimes DVD. Husbands, There's so many good resources. Yeah, husbands, wives, families. Yeah. yeah. Did you find, though, I mean, having programs is is a good thing, and we need that kind of focus. But it's, it's kind of like, maybe I can be a bit controversial here, it's kind of like having welcomers at the church, you know? If mm-hmm. it's a good idea to be welcoming, but sticking a welcoming badge on someone and have them be the official welcomer, it kind of feels a bit like it's manufactured. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, yeah. I remember when I was a I counselor, agree. people saying to me, you have to care because you're paid to kind of thing. Mm-hmm. What yeah. mm-hmm. It really feels genuine when you go to a parish and another couple, another family, yes. another, yeah. you know, the, there's an organic connection between mm-hmm. you and the and the parish itself. How do, how do we go about building that level of community where, um, and another question I guess I'd raise is the intergenerational connection seems to be lost in our modern society. Like mm-hmm. people don't have uncles, aunts, grandparents yeah. actively involved in their the raising children anymore. Uh, well, one of the things actually that we did, I totally agree with you. I think the ideal really is to connect both with our, you know, the in-laws, outlaws, the family around the, um, and, and befriending each other and welcoming other people into our lives is that, that's really the way it ought to be. Mm. Um, but there are, I think, too, some things like, well, we, one of the things, for instance, we've just come out of Lent now, but, um, Every I, I really missed Lent at our parish because for ten years every single Friday night in Lent we always had uh, first we had Stations of the Cross and then Mass and then we had a soup and buns uh, you know like a vegetarian soup and then and then we had a DVD series and then the kids would go off and play and but it, but it was all but it was all ages and right. and it it was a real kind of family gathering thing but but I do th- I totally agree with you that I think the best thing is when we when we really connect heart to heart with another family or another couple. Yeah. But how do we do that? It's, yeah, it's, it's. Well, there's a program here in, in Canberra. Now, I don't know how if it's still going, but I remember, I knew the, the couple who were organizing in Canberra, they had this vision that of connecting Catholic couples and they mm-hmm. asked couples to just sign up for four dinners a year. And they had, I think it was four or five couples in the parish who agreed to this. And then all the people who went through marriage prep had to agree that, for the first four years, they would have dinner with someone once every quarter. That's and perfect. They, Love and it. And they just rotated through, and that was all it was, dinner. Yeah. They just rotated yeah. through all the couples who'd volunteered, and it meant that there was about five couples, in regular couples in that church, who were always knew someone when they showed up. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And so That's if they came great. for baptism or something, they knew people there, and, and they knew they'd had a conversation with someone, and they could take them aside and ask them you know, that piece of advice you couldn't ask an estranged family or something like that. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that idea. And I, I wish that we'd gotten that, that idea going because I, th- I think one of the, the hardest things was we, we probably have prepared over 700 couples for marriage. I'm um, right. Cause we were, we were doing kind of big groups at the, the archdiocese for a little while. And, and, yeah. and the follow up was almost, well, I mean, we did a bit better in, in our own parish, but still, it wasn't as good as that. And I think that's where we fall short. People need yep. not just 
a weekend. Like we need to be connecting. It's a funny thing. It's kind of our our culture, isn't it? That we don't let people into our little our little nuclear work, family world. You know, it's almost mm-hmm. like a shame if we have to ask for help, or if people come in, we have to kind of tidy everything up and make sure everything looks pristine. And we're mm. we're a really perfect couple. Look, mm, whereas right. um, I remember when we were first had a child, my wife was uh, feeling ashamed because someone came in and did the dishes for us, and it was that I thought mm. it was the most practical and beautiful way they could help yeah, us yeah, out because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have to do the dishes. Yeah, um, yeah. but <laughs> but it was um. It, it, it was a real thing, and I realized we've actually got some a little bit of pride issues maybe, but yep. it's very much yeah. a cultural thing that we don't like to have people see us at our worst. Uh, when we need help, we kind of shut mm-hmm. down and don't let people mm-hmm. in. But how does a, a local parish uh, sort of break through that? We can't do it by knocking their door down, um, no. so we kind of have to win them in some way. It's kind mm-hmm. of win their trust, and I don't know how that yeah. happens. Well, and and it is hard in large parishes, too. I think that's why we almost have to go to programs a bit. I don't know. Like, I just I just love little small parishes. But when you've got, you know, how many families did we were out at the, I think it was like 200, uh, no, I mean, no, no, two, no, 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 like 2,500, Yeah, 2,500 families or something. Yeah. And and it's just, it's, it's very difficult uh, hmm. to have such a, a huge parish. I think in smaller ones, it is easier because you can at least notice when somebody's new and you can go or missing. But but back to what you were saying about pride, I think, you know, I've just been realizing more some of the, the coaching and stuff that we've been doing that I just really feel that pride is maybe even the biggest enemy in in marriage, too. I just think that um, I mean, a lot of people will say selfishness or or I, I don't know. I just think that humility which is obviously at the i mean i have to be able to admit that yes. i have to grow before i yes. can grow in any area yeah. and and if and if i think that i'm better than my husband or all of my all of our marriage problems start with him I, i'm not going to examine myself and right. so anyways that's a bit of it just when you were talking about pride i just think that that's a really really crucial issue I, look i agree with you on that actually carol I, I think that you could even go further than that and say i think most people will acknowledge that they have to make an effort. They might be selfish, but they can they even selfish people admit, yeah, I don't care. But they the the pride thing is hard to admit because the pride mm. itself forbids it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. um but having said that, there is such a way I mean, the way Catholic missionaries have worked in in third world countries and other sort of places is that they one of the hallmarks of their ministry is they bring dignity to people who are undignified. You know, mm. they 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 offer their ministries in ways which dignify even Mother Teresa. She's picking someone up off the yep. street. They're absolutely untouchable by the rest of society. What does she give them? Dignity first, and then and then the help yeah. she brings. Yeah. So I just wonder. I I mean, I'm genuinely struggling with this. How do you bring when people are hurting? And it's quite clear in our statistics. I don't know what Canada's mm-hmm. like, but in Australia, we've got more than half of marriages failing. And and it's the hurt it causes is immense. And without blaming any particular people, I think it's partially mm-hmm. due to lack of preparation, and we're not really understanding what we're getting mm-hmm. into most of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but mm-hmm. we just don't seem to have a ministry which which restores the dignity of humanity. Because one of the dangers, mm-hmm. maybe I'm being a bit controversial here, but one of the dangers I think of emphasising the church's position on marriage is it sounds to people who have a broken family as if we're telling them off. As if we're mm-hmm. saying you're not good enough, you haven't reached mm-hmm. the standard kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. really, what John Paul II and others were saying is, we recognise that when when things aren't right, it hurts, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and that's when you need grace, and that's when you need um, help from your brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah, how we go about that without coming across as being Puritans or condemnation, you know, kind of thing. I, I know. don't know. I know. I, know. I, I, know. I well, I think yeah. So. I, there's something about the cross and suffering and our our owning our own suffering, bringing that to Christ mm-hmm. and um, and recognizing that each one of us, I mean, every every one of us has some suffering and every marriage has some suffering. And that oftentimes it is that suffering that really is maybe not the the source of grace is God, but but I mean, it points us. It points us to God. It draws us closer to God. People see that, Carol. If if you're real about how hard things are, yeah. Um, we had Simka Fisher on here um, twice now, and 
one of her books, um, the um, what is it, the Sinner's Guide to NFP, is so engaging huh. because she actually takes like this is hard, this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This yeah. is a real struggle. And here's how yes. husbands and wives hurt each other all these times. Mm-hmm. And this yes. is real. And now here's some practical tips of how to sort of work towards getting over that. Mm-hmm. Um, when you talk real talk mm-hmm, about mm-hmm. your pain, about the struggles, about the fact that marriage is one of the hardest things uh, to do with your life, yep. but also the most rewarding and, and fulfilling things mm-hmm. to do with your life, then people start to actually realize, hey, you guys aren't just pie in the sky, la, 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 God is great kind of thing. Yes. Right. You're actually you're talking to real people about real suffering. Yes. That can That's go right. really well. Yeah, I think it's really important to draw the connection between family life, marriage, and the Eucharist, you know, are um, because in the Eucharist, of course, it's Christ offering up his sacrifice to the Father for the glory of God and salvation of souls. And and that is the the fountain from which all of our our Christian life flows. And yeah. and so our our family life, our marriage is Eucharistic too. Um not only in terms of giving thanks, but also uh, offering up all that suffering, all that struggle, all that hard work, mm-hmm. and and it's it's inextricably linked to the, mm. to the sacrifice of the cross, you know, in the mass. <laughs> it's funny as you're saying that. I'm remembering Saint John Chrysostom's words to um, to young men. He says, uh, "Is your wife um, quarrelsome? Is she ugly? Is she um, unfaithful?" Even if she's all these things, none of you has a wife as unfaithful and ugly and quarrelsome as the as Christ has. In there the you church. go. That's, that's right. <laughs> and that's and the he truth. gave his life for her, so mm-hmm. no excuses, young men. <laughs> right? There you go. <laughs> and you know, in our modern experience, sometimes we think the mass is all about me. It's all about you know what I get out of it. It yep. should be entertaining, and. And sometimes we think marriage should be like that as well, that it, yes. it's all about it me. Should, it should feel it good. Should, it should feel good. It should be Yeah, my wife's okay, but does she dance? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. And, 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 and the truth is, you know, marriage is, I mean, it's more like... A call to the cross. It's a call to the cross. It's a call to transformation. It's like life in a rock tumbler where yep. you have two rough gems you know, stones, precious stones, but they're in the rough. And over the course of decades they're polished and and knock when, off some big chunks here and there <laughs> yeah and 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 in the process they become the the type of people the beautiful people that god intended them to be yeah mm. and so sometimes that hurts and yep. and, and it doesn't mean it's gone wrong because it does hurt you mentioned yeah. before paul about covid and how it's sort of stymied the interpersonal ministries we have mm-hmm. but um mm. you guys have taken it in a in a direction i wish i had i mean Hmm. Part of we started this podcast before COVID, but uh, part of the the church's attempt to engage with its people has been online. But you yeah. guys are, are starting to take um, marriage ministries online. So can we talk about how that began? What where it sort of the the idea of it and where sure. you're taking it? Sure. Um, I mean, essentially, um, this is even more Carol's brainchild than mine. She's always been thinking about what more can we do to help families? What more can we do to help ministry? And when we got laid off because of COVID, it gave us a great deal of time to develop this. And and so we're aiming this very much at couples who are struggling. And wanting to improve their relationship to to you know to restore joy and hope in their relationships carol why don't you say a little bit more Uh, about yeah so it's just yeah we're just we're just offering some courses we're just starting our first course um what's it called again (laughs) seven steps to heal your christian marriage but but really actually and and i and we do believe that that it's going to help and so that's we're just really thankful for that but just for the listener's sake it's called the wild goose academy and Wild we'll Goose put- Marriage Academy. Academy. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Wild Goose Marriage Academy. We'll be putting yeah. a link in our in our show notes, but you can just Google that and you'll find it, I That's think. Sure, sure. But but what one one of the things that we're really quite what I'm I'm really quite excited about is actually it kind of ties in with with what we've been talking about is that uh, what we want to do most of most of what we're going to be doing is free there there will be a cost with the courses and stuff, but but what we're really ex- what I'm really excited about is actually connecting with amazing couples and families and real um, marriages and couples and families around the world. Cause we just know a lot of awesome families. Actually, we were thinking about 
asking, like interviewing <laughs> you guys too. And you know, the Magels and the, the Viners, different people that snack and act, snack and, eat and stuff. You know, lots of people that, that we know from, from JP2 days. But there's so many amazing families. And you know what? It, it's, it's one, one of the blessings of technology is that we can reach across the miles and we can talk with, you know, like the Viners struggled with infertility. They can share about that. You can share about some of the struggles that you had, especially in the early days with Albert. You know, like people can, we can talk about like, okay, like the Alexanders from the Alexander House on EWTN. They, they, you know, they, they both had infidelity. They, they were on the brink of divorce. Like there's lots of the stories out there are going to help people say, you know what, if they made it through, then I can get some hope there. Or like yep. they understand, like we're dealing with infertility and it's agonizing or whatever the the issue is. And so what we're really hoping to do is spend a lot of our time actually, what well, kind of what you're doing really. And uh, we were thinking we'd probably do like a, uh, using Zoom, right? So that we yep. can actually see the couple and their kids crawling all over their heads and whatever, you know, <laughs> on their couch and stuff. And, and just, you know, and just saying this is a real family and yeah. they've got struggles and they've got hurts and this has not been perfect for them and it's probably yep. never going to be. But, but you know what? They've learned some things and I can learn from them. And, yeah. and because we have a lot of things to learn from each other and nobody has this thing down pat and, yeah. um, and God calls us, you know, I, I just think that again, like I think it was Pope Paul the sixth who said that, you know, we're going to help people more through our witness than through teaching. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, the whole quote that was, um, attributed to Francis, I don't think it was him, but it, where he says, go and preach the gospel, use words if necessary. Right. You know, yeah. Basically, do it yeah. with your actions. In fact, one of the things I say in one of my talks about sharing your faith is when you open your mouth to talk about the faith, it should only be to explain what your actions have already said. Mm, mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like that. Let's, I mean, that's probably a good place to kind of wrap this up. Now, as we said for the listener, the, the links will be in the show notes. But also, if you've got some ideas about marriage, about how we can improve it in parishes, about um, circumstances where you think we could have done better or um, or whether someone has really done a good thing, we'd love to hear about it. But also how we do this online, because dignity is personal. And uh, Paul and Carol have just shared about how the personal interaction can happen through Zoom in ways that weren't possible because... I know when we were with young kids, we couldn't get to marriage counselling because the kids, we couldn't find mm -hmm. anyone to babysit. So we just mm -hmm. had to sort of tough it out. And that's not always um, a good thing for people because they need that kind of interaction. Perhaps this internet uh, way of doing things can actually get places that uh, we can't get in person. So more power mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. um, Thank and you. And also to all Catholics trying to build community through helping marriages or just simply being married. You know, those mm -hmm. of you who are married out there, your marriage is a witness. This is what Paul was just saying and Carol was just saying. Your marriage is a witness. It's mm -hmm. a testimony to God's grace and to and to love. So keep yes. that up. That's about it for this week. If today's discussion got you thinking or arguing with us, let us know. You can contact us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook or Discord. Give us some more ideas for shows, especially in the Building Catholic Communities theme. Uh, or if you think we're wrong, feel free to hit us up. Lots of other people have, and we've really appreciated your feedback. Give us a review on iTunes. We'll be back next week, but that's all for now. Thank you for listening to This Catholic Life. <music> <laughs>